I'm gonna show you how to make thumbnails for YouTube that people will want to click on, and we're starting right now. What is going on? My name is Nick from TuberTools.com. Welcome to another video. If this is your first time here and you wanna learn how to grow your channel, make videos and all types of other YouTube related stuff, start now by subscribing and clicking the bell so you don't miss anything. Okay, I've gotten a ton of requests to make this video, so it's about time that I do it. It doesn't matter what software or service you are using to make your thumbnails, the information that I'm gonna share with you in this tutorial is going to give you insight into how to make effective thumbnails for YouTube. Again, Again, it doesn't matter what software you're making your thumbnails in, this video is going to apply to you. So let's head over to the computer so I can show you how to make thumbnails. Okay, now that we're here in front of the computer, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna show you how to make a thumbnail, and it doesn't matter what software that you're using, I'm gonna go over the principles of making a quality thumbnail. So as far as the step-by-step -step things that I'm doing, that part isn't important, but what I want you to pay attention to here are the actual concepts that I'm sharing with you to make sure that you're making thumbnails that people will click on. Now, if you wanna learn how to make a video on a mobile device, I'll put a link at the very top of the screen that will take you to my brother's channel where he actually just released a video that will teach you how to do that on your mobile phone. But the first thing that we wanna do in any thumbnail is of course, you wanna make sure that you add an image. And a lot of people are making a big mistake when it comes to this part right here because What'll happen is a lot of people, they'll make an image, right? They'll get their image out there and they'll put their image in there. And when they do that, they're looking at it in terms of, you know, hey, this looks cool. I'm just gonna, I'm gonna use this. But when it's small, they're not really considering people being able to recognize what's going on there, right? So what we wanna do is we wanna take this up a notch and I'm gonna bring in the same exact picture. The only difference being, I'm going to make sure that when this is small, that you can still see that this is a lens because what I'm gonna do in this particular thumbnail is I'm actually going to focus this thumbnail on the lens to help people recognize that lens because the idea here, that one of the main concepts that I wanna go over with you here, the main thing that you wanna keep in mind is when you're putting your thumbnails together, let's say that this is a tech channel or a photography channel, we're talking about the best lens, you know, is this the best lens for you, that kind of thing, right? If you're talking about that, whatever imagery that you're using in your thumbnails, you wanna make sure that it is connecting with the interests of the people that are surfing around YouTube looking for things to watch. So in this particular case, if we're targeting people that are interested in cameras or camera gear or tech or photography, this would be a great thing because this is something that they would actually recognize as something that they are interested in, which would make them pause for at least a second and at least take note of what it is that's going on in your thumbnail. So once you have the image in place, you can even see right here the difference just those two little things make, right? Taking the image from there to this so that people can easily recognize that image. Now, there's a bunch of things we can do in terms of like tweaking the colors and sharpening the image and things like that, which is more advanced level stuff that I'll be sharing in a later video. But right now we're just going over the conceptual things to make sure that you're making effective thumbnails. So the next thing that you wanna do is whatever software that you're using, um, you wanna make sure that you're adding some type of element. Now you can do this in style, uh, the way that you do your text, the colors that you use and things like that, or you can also add little graphic elements that people can recognize your content by. So in this case, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take this shape right here and I'm gonna put it down in this corner. And you're probably thinking, why are you putting it in that corner? That's where the timestamp is, which is absolutely true. But what we're gonna do is we're gonna put that behind the timestamp there and then we're gonna put another one that is gonna be up here just to kind of help frame the whole thing in just a little bit. And then that way, when the timestamp does come on here, the timestamp would be somewhere right around in here. So what happens here is if that timestamp is there, then you still have your branding elements on the top and the bottom for people to recognize. There's no text on there, there's no logo on there, anything like that. It's just that particular stylistic addition to your thumbnails to let people recognize and know that it's your content. Now, you can also go even more simple. You know, let's say that part of your branding colors is something that's just, uh, you know, that's something that's just red. So in that case, what we're gonna do is we are going to make it red. And then instead of doing like a full, you know, cover down in the corner, what we're gonna do is we're just gonna do a little stripe, right? Because what we're trying to do is we're just trying to grab attention. We're trying to make that element that every single time we upload a video, people are gonna recognize that as something that we do or something that you do so that they can come in and make sure that they 
that they watch it because they like the specific type of content that you make. And of course, you know, you can add multiple stripes, you can make that solid, you can do different colors, whatever your thing is. The idea is to make it to where when somebody sees this on YouTube to where they can say, oh, I, I recognize this. I'm, I'm used to watching this channel. I like this person's content or whatever. It's that pattern that people start getting trained to look for. So in this particular case, I'm just gonna put that down there in the bottom. And then I'm actually gonna move a, a, another version right up here in the top um, as well. We're just gonna go ahead and do that and I'll scoot this one down so it matches. There we go. So those are gonna be our branding elements on here, right? These are gonna be the things, the, the two items, the two visual items that people are going to recognize. Now, another mistake that people are making a lot on YouTube is the actual text that they're using. So instead of making text that is easy to read, they're using all these crazy fonts and things like that. And because of that, what's happening is you're overwhelming the people that are looking around at content. You're overwhelming the people that are looking around at thumbnails. You want to try to keep your text simple and easy to read, right? Because you might think, well, you know, if I keep it simple like this, it doesn't look as fancy and that's okay. The idea is to make it effective, not necessarily fancy, right? So in this case, what I'm focusing on is I'm focusing on the best lens, right? Because I want people that are into the lenses or people that are into photography, I want them to see this and say, oh, okay, this is something that I'm interested in. I definitely want to um, check this out and see what's going on, you know, with this particular video. But in this particular case, you know, we've got this red thing going on and you can see here how the red gets kind of lost. I'm going to scale this down and you can see this red really gets kind of lost in there. So what I'm going to do and a lot of people are using this red too because they they think that it grabs attention. But what I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna convert that red to a white, right? And automatically right there, even though it's on the white, it's still standing out more. And then I'm gonna put a little bit of a shadow behind it to help it stand off of the thumbnail a little bit. So basically what we did is we went from that right here to this, which helps it stand off a little bit off of the uh, canvas back there in the back. Now, another thing that you can do, of course, that I mentioned earlier, is you can take this even farther by adding, you know, contrast and, and additional colors and things like that to your image to make sure that it grabs attention or demands attention wherever it happens to be on YouTube. Now, there's a few different ways that you can do this. One, um, and I'm going to do this version really fast for you so that you can get. Um, an example of what's going on. And I'll continue talking to you in this process. But basically, what I'm doing right now is I'm actually cutting this out. And you see a lot of really big YouTubers doing this right now. You see a lot of people, this is kind of the trend, really, in thumbnails right now. A lot of people are making, you know, it's kind of like a, a, a semi-transparent cutout of whatever it is that they are trying to get people to focus on, that element in the thumbnail that they're wanting people to see and recognize. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just cutting this out really fast and it's a little bit sloppy, but I'm just trying to show you the idea. But basically what a lot of people are doing right now is they're doing something like this. And when they do this, they are making it to where people can really focus in on a particular thing. So what we're gonna do, because we just made that addition, is I'm actually going to add an overlay color here in the background. I'm gonna make this something, um, Let's say we just make it something kind of like this, or blue is kind of the popular color right now. A lot of people are doing the, the blue overlay with their stuff. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take that and then I'm gonna pull it back a little bit so you can still see what's going on in the background a little bit right there, but then everything is focused on that thumbnail. You see the difference that that made? So just in that alone, it makes a humongous difference and can make a humongous difference in terms of how people are responding to your content. So right out of the gate, just so far, we've already taken it from this to this, right? And we're just clearly communicating, hey, this is what we're this is what we're doing here on this on this video. We're talking about lenses, we're trying to answer the question of if this is the best lens or not. Um, we have our branding on here so that our current subscriber base can recognize that it's our content so that we can pull them into the video as well when it, our content is showed and recommended to them all over the place on the platform. Um, another thing that people do is they'll add strokes to these, which is a stroke is basically just an outline, but they'll add outlines to whatever it is that they're trying to focus on. They'll add some drop shadows and things like that. I'm actually going to do a whole series um, coming up in the very near future um, to where I'm going to show you how to make 
the thumbnails of a bunch of different creators. Um, so I can show you step by step exactly how they do what it is that they are doing in their content. Because a lot of people, if you don't have any type of graphic experience, you don't have any type of experience doing this type of thing, then there's no way to even really know how to do a lot of this stuff. So that's what I want to do is I want to make sure that I show you how to do all of this so that you can make sure that you're making the most effective thumbnails possible. So what we've done is we've taken this and we've turned it into this to make it a little bit more interesting. Now we're, we're going to take this up another notch here. And what we're going to do is we're going to take this text that we had here and keep in mind this, this cut out here is a little bit janky, but it's okay. We're still going to roll with it. So keep in mind another thing that you can do is you can say, okay, well, I'm going to put a box around this and you see me doing this a lot in my thumbnails. And I'll go ahead and show you exactly how I do that right here. And I need to make these white really quick, but basically what I'm, what I'm getting ready to show you is how you can take just the normal text that you would normally use in your thumbnails, how you would take that normal text and you would make it something that like really kind of screams off of the page and kind of demands attention, right? So you can do this in a couple of ways. So in this particular case, I, you can do it and I'll show you this example just so you can see what's going on. Uh, but in this particular case, I'm going to focus the viewer on the word lens because that is exactly what it is that we are trying to grab their attention with, what it is we're trying to bring their attention to. So because of that, I'm going to focus them on lens. And you can see right out of the gate, if I zoom down, it makes that just grab tons of attention, right? Regardless of how small it is, the main focus is on lens. We're talking about lenses. We're talking about the best lenses. I'm trying to communicate through my imagery that I'm talking to photographers, to people that would be interested in lenses. That's what we're going for here. And then the same exact thing, you know, you can take that up a notch and you can do the same thing here to where you also focus, you know, the best on that. And then we're also going to do the same exact thing on the but what we're going to do, and this is something that I that I also really want to um, make sure that that I make clear in in this tutorial is when you're when you're putting your thumbnails together in the words that you're using, you want to make sure that you're not just filling up words for the sake of filling up words. You want to make sure that you're using focus words. And what I mean by that is you want to think, okay, when I'm putting this thumbnail together, how am I going to do this? so that the people that I'm trying to reach are going to see this and they're gonna say, oh yeah, you know what, I, I, I need to watch this, right? That's what your job is. As a content creator, as somebody that's putting out video content and trying to get views to it, that is what you are supposed to be doing, right? That's part of your process is learning, oops, that's part of your process is learning how to get those clicks, how to make this stuff so that people will respond to it. So because I put these boxes on here, it's kind of stuffed the whole thing up a little bit. It's made the whole thing a little bit bigger um, than I would like. So I'm going to do some quick size adjustments here just to make this a little bit more visually appealing as well. So once I have you know the space worked out there a little bit, then other things that you can do, and I do this on my thumbnails too, is you can go through and you can add drop shadows and things like that. And the, the cool thing about doing this is you know it adds just a little bit of dimension to what it is that you're doing your thumbnails. A lot of people are copying me um, on this. I wasn't the originator of this style by any means, but um, since since I've been doing this, a lot of people in the space um, have been doing this, and a lot of people just all over YouTube have been doing this because they like the thumbnails, which is cool. I'm flattered by that, so feel free to copy away if you like. But, um, but basically, you know, other things that you can do is you can do something similar in terms of just taking it, tweaking it around a little bit, and then we've got that whole little 3D thing going for the sake of making that something that um, people would be a little bit more intrigued to click on. Now, in this situation, what I'm gonna do is I'm also going to take this and I'm gonna change the to black, right? Because I want them, again, to focus on best lens. Because remember, I'm trying to communicate to photographers here. I'm trying to, can, uh, I'm trying to communicate to people that are into lenses and things like that. So in this particular case, then the best lens, I'm focusing on best lens. That, that's the most important part of what's going on here. And I can even tweak this more by really taking the highlight off of that and then swelling up lens even more because I have that extra space to work with. Right. And then now we've got this whole thing going on and then we can move this up here a little bit, scoot this 
and the rest of the imagery over to the side a little bit. Because remember, what we're trying to do is we're trying to make this easy to read, easy to recognize, and we're trying to make it, you know, a little bit pleasing to the eye as well. So another option for this, you know, another fun thing that you could do um, just to break it up just a tad is you could also make the best as a secondary because it's still grabbing attention. And then so you have your lens as the primary focus here. You have best as the secondary and then you have the as just kind of a supportive thing. So we have it in black so it's not drawing um, too much attention to this whole thing. And what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and just polish it off by we're going to match whatever colors it is that we're going to use for the branding thing here. And then I'm going to polish this off by adding like a um, eight pixel border to this. Oops. By adding an eight pixel border to this. And let me go ahead and put it on the inside. There we go. So now we have a little bit of a border going on there. And that right there basically makes it extremely easy for people to identify what is going on in your thumbnail, what is the video about, and so on. What you want to make sure that you avoid. Let me show you this really quick. What you want to, and, and you can see right here the difference in the two, right? So what you want to make sure that you um, that you avoid also is say that you have something like this, right? Say you're not going this route. Say that you're just trying to go a more easy route, so to speak, because you don't have the 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 software, the options to make the text like I was just showing you. Um, so what I'm going to show you here is I'm going to show you something that you want to make sure that you avoid. And the, the reason I'm showing you this is because again, when I'm doing my, my channel gradings on the weekends, on Saturdays, this is something that I see tons of people doing. And it's not, it's not, it's not helping any when you're doing this because the idea is that we're trying to create as many advantages as possible and create as little disadvantages as possible. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna recreate this and you can see it right here on the screen. And then I'm gonna take this and I'm gonna go and I'm gonna mess up the fonts in a way that a lot of people are doing their fonts. So I'm gonna turn this back white again. I'm gonna do that same thing that I did before in terms of you know helping this text stand out a bit. And then I'm going to go here and I'm going to change the font. I'm gonna change it to something, uh, I'm gonna change it to something that's kind of kind of fancy a little bit because I know a lot of people are doing this. Something like this would definitely be okay because as you can see, it's still legible. It's still easy to read. It's still easy to see what is going on. Here, let me actually scoot this text over a little bit. So as I'm flipping through these, you can see what I mean. So I'm going to make this a little bit bigger. There we go. So if you look at the text right now, Right, we're gonna scale this down. You can even do this on your own computer or on your phone if you're following another tutorial. But if you look here, right, you see how easy that is to read? And then you look here, also extremely easy to read. It's a little bit thinner, so it doesn't grab as much attention. Um, this is also extremely easy to read. This is easy to read. It's a little bit more fun, a little bit more loose. Um, as we scroll down, one of the things that I'll see a lot is I'll see people using things like this right, using fonts like this. And when you use fonts like this, what you're doing is you're complicating it. And it might look cute, it might look, you know, different or whatever, but the thing is it's difficult to read. And the idea is you wanna make all of this stuff extremely easy to read for people. Same thing with this one, very difficult to read. Looks cool, looks very cool, but it's difficult to read. Here again, super bold, in your face, very easy to read. Another one, this one's a little bit okay, but a lot more not okay, because as you can see, like the T over there is kind of difficult, it gets kind of lost. Um, so you wanna try to make sure, like what I'm trying to hammer home here, is that whatever fonts it is that you are using, you wanna make sure that those fonts are very easy to read. Even if it means using something basic, you know, like an Arial font or something along those lines, something that maybe, um, you might think to yourself like, ah, you know what, this, this looks kind of basic. Basic, if it's easy to read, is better than pretty and not easy to read. So same thing here, you know, it's a different kind of font, but it's very easy to read. This one here, relatively easy to read, that would work. This one, almost impossible to read, right? So, so what you wanna do when you're making your thumbnails is you wanna just go through all your text and make sure that whatever it is that you decide to do and whatever it is that you decide to use, that it's extremely easy to read. And, and one thing that I really recommend, and I, I can't stress this enough, is to make sure 
that when you are putting this stuff together, you want to make sure that you're building it at a small size if you can, or at the very least, open it up on your computer and look at it at a small size to see if you can actually read what is being said on the thumbnail. Again, I'm going to put a link to D. Again, I'm going to put a link to D's video up in the top corner of this. Again, I'm going to put a link to D's video in the top corner. Again, I'm going to put a link to D's video in the top of the screen. So make sure that you head over and the, you watch the video on his channel about how to do this on your thumbnail. He's actually going to take you through the process of making a thumbnail instead of just going over the concepts, which he's doing also. He's also going to take you through the process of actually building a thumbnail for free on your mobile device. So make sure to check that out. If you want to learn more about growing your channel, making videos and all types of other YouTube related stuff, start now by hitting the round subscribe icon so you don't miss anything. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you next time.